What's up, you guys? Welcome back to Wide Body Nation. This is my 10,000 mile review of the Toyo Open Country AT3s on our 2020 RAV4 TRD off road. Obviously, the best color, lunar rock, but it's not about the car as much as it is about the tires. So, as you guys can see, rocking the Toyo Open Country AT3. We just got the car serviced, did another tire rotation. So, I feel like this 10,000 mile review will give you guys a pretty good idea of whether or not you should pull the trigger. And my initial, you know, recommendation is yes, I would say a tire like this, especially this specific tire and the specific size is, is quite good as a replacement for the OEM Falcon Wild Peak, um, whatever this came with. And they came slightly smaller. So this upgraded size as well as upgraded tire is going to give you guys the best bang for your buck and best performance so this tire size is 235 60 18 so obviously still on 18 inch wheels these are these are the oem wheels that came on the trd off-road still an 18 still a 60 profile tire but the width is 235 which you guys can see just just produces slightly more sidewall you know Keep your, uh, keep your significant other from uh, maybe curbing the wheels up a little more than a 225 would, especially with these Toyos on there. And that 60 profile, sorry, it's a little windy out here, guys, but that 60 profile with the slightly thicker tread, the 235, it's going to make your tire a few millimeters taller, which, as you guys can see, the ground clearance on this looking, looking pretty good. As far as the, the size goes, I have seen some people run a 245 60 18 or a 245 55 18. I think the 235 kind of splits the difference between a 225 and a 245. Um, like I said, all the benefits of having a slightly bigger tire without getting that extra weight or, or possible rubbing that you may get with an even wider and potentially taller tire. I have no rubbing with these 235 6018s we are we're wearing them quite nicely you guys can see barely any wear really now let's talk about tire pressure because this is something that I've not not just noticed on this car or my truck but my performance cars my Hellcat my Corvette everything is I find that the manufacturers that the dealerships that the tire shops are always a little um aggressive on their inflation of the tires you know the door sill on this car says 33 as the recommended tire pressure but i always seem to leave the tire shop or the dealership when with them in the 35 to 37 range and i don't i don't have a big beef with them on on that with like a, a tire like this obviously this car you know you want to get the best mileage possible while staying safe so you know having 36 psi on the tires rather than 33 you're probably gonna see maybe a half an MPG better with that, but it's gonna wear down your tire unevenly. I've been running these at 32 to 34 PSI, and you guys can see they've barely even worn in the tire really anywhere, whereas, and it's, and it's even. What I've noticed though with the when, the, when I get the car back from the dealership or the tire shop or whatever, is when they're inflated more to the 36, 37 range, this middle of the tread is always dirtier um, and this part's always cleaner, indicating that, that that tire is a bit overinflated for even wear. So I highly recommend to you guys to always check your tire pressure. Obviously keep it up in the 30s so you're not getting your TPMS light unless you're like off-roading uh, off or, or it's bad weather conditions where you need that sag in the tire. But, you know, when, when you have the tires improperly inflated, then you're gonna get improper wear. And in this case, when they're overinflated, that center of the tread is gonna wear down a lot faster, therefore not getting you to 50, 60, 70,000 miles, probably gonna cause you guys to have to replace it at 30 to 40K, which for expensive tires like this, that's not something you want. So these are also LT rated, not SL rated, which, um, or sorry, they're XL rated, so extra load rather than standard load. So they're a bit beefier. They are a heavier tire, but I have only noticed probably one MPG lower. You know, my wife mainly drives this car. 
around town and on the highway. And so instead of getting low 30s, she gets about 30 on the dot. You know, instead of getting 31 or 32 combined, she's been getting high 29.5, 29.6 with our mixed driving. So yes, there are heavier tire than an OEM, like an all season OEM tire, or even the Falcon um, Wild Peaks that came on here before. But, you know, much better performing tire in the snow. We have used this tire in the snow multiple times in Wisconsin and here in Tennessee, believe it or not, it snowed this winter uh, three to four inches. So we drove the car over a hundred miles in the snow. So right now the tire pressure is at uh, 36, maybe 37 now that I drove it over here to do this video. And so I'm gonna take you guys for a ride in here with them aired up all the way, you know, potentially too much a little bit. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take you guys for a ride after I go ahead and drop them to what I recommend your tire pressure should be set at. As you guys can see, 29.6 MPG. This is just a regular four cylinder Toyota motor. This is not a hybrid, not anything like that. So about 30 MPG with some good all-terrain tires is nothing to sneeze at in my opinion. Go ahead and close everything just so you guys can hear what the noise or lack thereof sounds like from in the cabin. And there will be parts of the video where I'm not talking so you guys can kind of just hear. We're going to go ahead and pull out of this gas station and onto a, you know, uh, a, a 40 mile an hour road. And once you guys have heard some, I'll talk about its about its performance, um, you know, off road, really just on gravel and wet grass, and then I'll talk about performance in the rain and in the snow. It is quite windy out today. All right, so that was thirty to forty miles an hour. We're going to stop at this light. So like I said, about 1 MPG lower with these tires, especially when I run them at about 33 PSI. 33 PSI creates a nice flat uh, tread pattern. When you What you guys will see when I air down, the tread is just totally flat with the ground, but not like sagging or anything or not wearing it so that the outer tread blocks are getting too much wear. 10,000 miles on these tires. And we've rotated them every 5,000 miles. And we did an alignment for all four wheels when we got the tires installed. It is very hot in here. Because I have the AC off. I'll turn the AC on while we're waiting at the light. No AC, no windows open.
right, so now that we've driven for a little bit, you guys can tell this highway is not quite the smoothest. Um, when these tires are aired up all the way, the ride quality is a bit harsher than when they're aired down to that 33 range. Um, that 33 range seems to be where the tires are the happiest, not just with wearing evenly, but also with a little bit more compliance in the ride arguably a little less noise and just a it just feels like where the tires should be and so I'm gonna pull off the highway here <coughs> gonna air them down to 33 and I'll show you guys where they were at before they're probably 37 or even 38 honestly right now because it's you know direct sunlight 80-ish degree, yeah, 85 degrees out. All right, so we'll pull in here. I'll air down to the correct tire pressure. One other comment I have right before we air down that has nothing to do with the air in the tires, but um, in these RAV4s, you know, you have three different drive modes. You have sport, you have eco and you have normal my wife used to like to drive this car in um in eco but i do find that with the added weight and rolling resistance of these tires that eco is not really as suitable uh it's not quite quick enough to go ahead and keep up just with how the car is set up with these new tires so we you know nine times out of ten i will drive it in normal mode right here and then on the off chance that I do need a little bit more pickup, obviously sport mode with this, uh, you know, naturally aspirated four cylinder, that's really just uh, keeping it in a little bit of a higher rev range uh, more than anything else. So, you know, eco mode kind of kills your throttle response and keeps the car in the most efficient gear range. So I find that uh, we drive exclusively in normal now. We don't touch the eco mode except for by accident. And, uh, you know, with that being said, let's go ahead and get out here, see what the tire pressure is at. And then obviously we will air down to 33. Let me give you guys a shot of the kind of the lack of a bulge. You, you don't really see the tire sagging very much. So, you know, I'll show you back here too. That tire has a bit of a rounded look to it. So that's indicating to you that it is a little bit overinflated in my at least in my opinion. And let's go ahead and check where these tires are at. I'll only show you one tire here. So we're at zero right now. And then, yeah, see these, these front ones right now are just shy of 40. Call that, call that 37 or 38. So I'm gonna go ahead and air these down to 33 where I recommend it. That's 33 warm. So it'll probably be sitting around 32 cold. So I'm gonna get to that and then we'll go ahead and show you guys the tire, how it sits after that. And then we'll get back on the road to show you what it's like in the preferred PSI. All right, so I've got the tires down to a little over 32 PSI, more like 33. And you guys can see now that the tire does have an actual bulge to it. I'll show you in the back here but you can see that the tire is actually uh, like f sitting flat on the road like it should. And so that's kind of what you want to see in my opinion, um, if you want these tires to last. And again, you guys can kind of tell with how dirty your tread blocks are, or if you guys have been driving a lot, 
obviously the center tread or the outer tread is going to be wearing additionally like when tires are new it's easy to tell because on these toyos they have this initial step that's only a one millimeter piece of tread these these outer tread little sipes right here and out here you can tell they're wearing a bit less so you know this is probably at like one millimeter shallower than it is out here when you grade from all the way down to the bottom of the tread so doing a pretty good job so far wearing these tires again we're down to you know it's 85 degrees out we're down to about 32 33 psi here is one spot where the wheel got curbed just lightly but that would have been prevented most likely from that if we had had these 235 60 r18s on there already so let me put this last tire cap on i'll give you guys a quick psi check before we drive again you guys can see 33 put this bad boy back on and we'll start rocking so overall i think the only real thing you could complain about with these unless you guys thought the tire noise was noticeable was you know you're gonna lose probably one mpg you're gonna get maybe a decibel or two more road noise you'll have to ride in normal mode rather than eco mode although i never really saw a ton better gas mileage in eco mode personally let me get me some ac real quick it is quite hot out today i'll turn it back off before we do any real driving so, you know, quote unquote downsides, bit less MPG, maybe a tiny bit more road noise. The car is a bit slower just because each corner has a few more pounds and a little bit more rolling resistance. But, you know, that's the, that's the beauty of these all-terrain tires. You, you make very little trade-off for much better performance. I mean, these are three-peak mountain so snow flake rated three peak mountain snowflake rated so you get that great winter performance xl load rating and durability and though this is not a sponsored review or anything i just paid for these tires i think i paid about a little over 250 per tire more like 270 i think per tire and then there's you know, taxes and all that shenanigans but until I have a reason to get another tire for any of my daily drivers, we're on some better pavement right now. Let's get up to 70 to 80 so you guys can hear the full So as you guys can see, you know, RAV4s, they're not the quietest cars, you know, with the, just a four banger working kind of hard. And, uh, you know, it's a RAV4. It's a 30 some odd thousand dollar car. Not a ton of noise deadening, but a great, great car. This is like the ultimate daily driver, in my opinion. Um, you know, just not, not a lot of downsides to going with a tire like this. And, you know, with the car being this color and the TRD off-road and, we got this the first year it came out with this new, all new Toyota design for the RAV4 and the first year they did the off-road package. This car gets nothing but compliments. And since we put these tires on, we've even started getting 
fresh compliments, even though this is a four-year-old car, people, I mean, you put new tires on anything, people are going to notice, but, um, you know, the slightly more rugged look of these all-terrain tires, I'm going to put the windows down because I am dying in here with no AC. Go ahead and hit that like button if you found this review helpful, though, since I've been sweating my butt off in here. I guess I could add the seat. I had the seat cooler on, but you know, I'll swing it around front one more time because I, you guys can see the car rolling. But you know, very little trade-offs and huge upside with these tires. Um, another thing I noticed on the Falcon Wild Peaks, and I don't know if this is on all of their tires, but we had it on the car for the first three years, and you know, it sees all four seasons and all that good stuff, but. They were starting to to crack, especially in the sidewall. You know, I don't know if I would call it actual dry rotting because they're still, you know, they were a three-year-old tire, so it's not like they were actually rotting. But they certainly had some uh, some cracks in them. There were small cracks, but the tires were showing their age, and we replaced them at forty-seven thousand miles, and and that is, you know, that is where I was comfortable. I mean, I don't I don't really take chances with tires. I, I hydroplaned. Back in in uh, college, when I had a uh, my Subaru WRX STI, and I had tires in the mail, and I hydroplaned before I could get them installed, and so I don't take chances with tires, and that's you know that's one of the reasons why I recommend to you guys. Here, I'll even show you here thirty three psi. So just running it. It, I have the key in my pocket. So overall, absolutely great tire. I mean, these compete with the BFG KO2s. I think they just came out with the KO3 as well. Maybe I'll throw the KO3s on another car or re replace these with the KO3 and give you guys another review. But super happy with the size. Absolutely no rubbing. Here, I'll even turn the wheel so you guys can just kind of see the fitment here. Um, you know, lock, locked out turning wise. Uh, we'll go like this. So it's all the way locked out as much as I can get it without moving the car. As you can see, there's this car is on stock suspension, no changes. Obviously, tons of room back here. The fronts are are within probably an inch or so. But, I mean, the rears are not even close, and they don't turn, obviously, so. Back there. You guys can see no evidence of rubbing in the wheel wells or anything. Wearing nice and even. I mean, these ones, you can even see. I was talking about these, these little steps right here on the outsides. And you guys can see it's just nice and even all the way across. And that is really what you want. You can see now that I aired down the tire too, I don't know if it's visible on camera, but the tire looks a lot flatter, uh, more like a box or a rectangle rather than bowed out in the middle right here. You guys can see the tire is a tiny bit of sag in the sidewall. Great room though here. I think you could probably get away with 245s, no issue. I just like the 235s because a little less weight, a little better MPG. So those trade-offs are just very, very low. But let me know what you guys think. Let me know, let me know what kind of tire pressure you guys run down in the comments below. If you guys have a Mopar, a Chrysler Dodge Jeep or Ram, go to destroyer1320.com and protect your car. If you guys have a any make and model, including a Toyota, go to trackhawkgps.com for a GPS kill switch module that pretty much makes your car uh, very, very hard to steal since you can actually just go ahead and remote uh, kill the starter and the thief can't program keys. They can't do really anything to your car and drive away. Well, they can program a key, but I could give you the key to this car. And if you have it killed, you're not going anywhere. And on the off chance someone steals it, you are tracking them like a hawk with live GPS tracking, geo fencing, and customizable settings. But I'll leave you guys with one more shot of these tires. Good looking tire, good looking car, 10 out of 10, would recommend. 
and twice on Sundays, which is when I'm filming this. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Stay safe out there and see you for the next video. love your car, do not buy one of these. These were great in the 90s, but it's 2024. This is what I use. It's called Trackhawk GPS, and the best part is it has a kill switch built in. To use the kill switch, simply open the Trackhawk GPS app, send the command, and now I have the key right here, foot on the brake, nothing. So even if someone had your key, they could not steal your car. But let's say it's you, and you wanna drive the car, simply go back into the app, disable the kill switch, it's that quick, you see green, and you're good to go. Now let's say that you forget to use your kill switch and someone does steal your car. Luckily, Trackhawk provides geofencing, live tracking, and trip history so that there is virtually no way your car doesn't get recovered. The best part is, is that we cover all modern makes and models, and we have a certified network of installers found on our website. Trackhawk GPS. Kill it, track it, keep it. <laughs>